Yo, what's going on, you guys? Your boy Pony Montana, and today I am back with another episode of The Basics. You guys have been asking for it, so I figured I'd drop you guys a video. Now, disclaimer I don't think I need to say disclaimer, but disclaimer, anyways, this is for beginners. If you guys are pros, if you guys are this, if you, if you guys are the cream of the crop when it comes to Madden, you guys don't you guys don't 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 care to watch this video. It doesn't doesn't matter to me because I know a lot of people like to leave comments like they are the greatest Madden players in the world. I'm here to tell you, you are not. Simple. But if you guys want to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new, all that good stuff, man. Let's get right into it now. First thing that I want to talk about is how to run simply. Very, very simple concept. We're going to run a random play because I think I just went to the uh, I think I just went to the the offensive only. And the way that you guys run the ball, a lot of people have a very, 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 very bad issue of holding turbo way too soon. Now, what I mean by that is look at me running without turbo. This is me running with, without turbo. You see how I can maneuver from side to side a lot better right now? Now, let me score a touchdown real quick, and let me show you the difference between that and me holding turbo. Holding turbo completely, this is me without turbo, and this is me with turbo. As, as you can see, you're slowing down completely by running turbo. You don't want that. That is, that is a horrible, horrible thing to do if you guys are trying to maneuver in between tackles. Now, this is the difference between, oh, this is the difference between me not holding turbo right here. Obviously, you sometimes trigger that one cut animation, but you do not lose speed once you do that. You hold turbo, it completely ruins how fast you can move from side to side, and you completely slow down. As you can see, he's trying to he's trying to keep his footing, and sometimes you might end up stumbling and tripping over absolutely nothing. And one of the reasons is because you guys are hitting turbo too soon, and that messes up your whole play. A lot of people are coming out, out of the gate, and they're holding turbo trying to run. Now, obviously, sometimes if you guys have nothing but green in front of you, that's okay to do. But a lot of the times, if you guys are trying to maneuver through tackles and stuff like that, turbo is not the way to do it. You guys have to let go of turbo. Make your move. Make your little cut, spin, whatever it is that you're planning on doing. And then that's when you just unload and hit turbo. Now, second thing that I want to talk about is when you hit turbo. Now, a lot of people do not know this, but there are two ways to hit turbo. Obviously, you can just hold turbo, but if you guys are breaking out in open field, the best way to keep breaking out in open field is to double tap turbo. As you can see, you see, you see, you see Ezekiel Elliott, you see Ezekiel Elliott's head kind of dip down lower because I am hitting turbo. I'm already hitting turbo. He starts to lose stamina, hit turbo again. As you can see, he gets a nice little push, a nice little, another breath of wind if you if you want to call it that so that you guys can outrun whoever it is that that is behind you because you start slowing down as you're running it's kind of like a 40 yard dash like you want to you want to get further by literally just tapping turp tapping you have to tap it twice and then hold it on the second tap you hold it and as you can see he just starts running a little bit faster he's doing his thing he's just moving faster and that will help you guys kind of break out and end up scoring a touchdown if you guys have nothing but open field. It definitely, definitely helps. So start doing that if you guys are trying to outrun some of your opponents. Now, next thing that I want to get to, strong side versus weak side runs. And for this, I'm going to actually have to choose an actual offense and defense. So on offense, we're going to come out in an ace formation just because it's a symmetrical for formation that you guys don't have to really think about. Now, in an ace formation, there really technically is no strong side. There really is no strong side. But I'm not talking about looking at your strong side. I'm talking about looking at the defensive strong side. Um, I have to actually call a play real quick. I'm going to drop down. And oh, never actually changed the play. Now, with the defensive strong side, I'm actually going to go into nickel formations just to kind of kind of give you guys a better... Uh, a better example of what I mean by a defensive strong side. Now I have to choose a random play again. I apologize about this. Oh, actually I don't. <sighs> sorry you guys. I'm sorry for being very, very bad at this. But you know, I'm doing this for you guys, so don't hate me. So on defense, we're gonna call a random nickel. And the reasoning for this is just so I can kind of show you guys. Now on offense, we are using, we're using 
an ace formation, which is a symmetrical formation, which means we can flip it, we can do whatever, and it doesn't change. As you can see, uh, formations like single back tight slots, formations like single back ace, single back ace close, deuce close, those types of formations, they are symmetrical formations, which means that there is technically no strong side. Um, on the defensive side, they are in a nickel formation, and this is something that a lot of people run online, and they just they spam nickel, 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 nickel. Very, very hard to, very, very hard to run on and stuff like that because for some reason nickel is somehow run defense apparently. So the reason, the way you kind of run past a at any type of formation that has a strong side like nickel right now, it has the strong side on the right side because it has that extra nickel literally hovering over the right side. You take that nickel out, it's a symmetrical formation. It's a symmetrical defensive formation, and that makes it very, very, very hard to choose where to run. But what you do to that is literally just run the opposite way of where the nickel cornerback is. And you should beat him literally just by having the numbers. And I'm going to show that. You should beat him simply just by having the extra numbers on your side. Now, this side right here, the right side, once again, is the strong side of the defense. So you run it to the left side. Another thing that you guys can do, especially if you guys are in the symmetrical type of formations and they are in the nickel, motion someone over. Have some add more to the numbers add more to the numbers and you guys will end up breaking out longer runs for more yards for more touchdowns right now once again they are in the double the double a gap for, for formation and we're just going to be running stretch we're just going to be running stretch we don't even need a motion that guy because we already have the numbers okay now the cornerback ended up getting the block shed that is one thing that we there's nothing we can do about that the defense gets block sheds there's absolutely nothing nothing that we can do about that defense base aligns and the corner is going moving more towards the left side this kind of looks more symmetrical but as you can see the right side is more open than the left because you have that cornerback that's just sitting there chilling which means the right side would be the stronger side to run on so we're going to motion this guy over and the next thing you know they end up getting the shed again like i said i cannot do anything about sheds that's just something that we have to deal with as madden players are sheds now as you can see the numbers game is piling up and we end up getting a nice five yards on that play run towards the stronger side of your offense run run towards the weaker side of the defense that will help you guys get more yards it's a numbers game it's a game of inches so you guys want to take whatever you guys can get next thing that i want to get into are right-handed qbs versus left-handed qbs now this is something that a lot of people don't ever ever mention but if you guys are running something as simple as a dive, look at how fast the dive is on the right side. Now I'm gonna flip that. I'm gonna flip that same dive, and if you guys are running it to the left side with a right-handed QB, as you can see, look at how slow that. The handoff is ten times slower because the QB has to switch hands off, and run it towards the other side i'm going to show the replay on that so you guys can see i feel like i'm rambling a lot and i apologize if if this is a lot but look at how slow look at how slow the handoff is there i'm going to do it one more time the handoff is just completely slow and usually they end up getting a block shot on you before you can ever before you can even do anything about it now we're going to run it to, to the right side and look at look at how fast the, the handoff is if you're running it to the right side that is the difference between right-handed QBs and left-handed. Now, if you're running a toss play or if you're running a stretch play, that does not matter. This is only for inside runs that this, this matters. It's very, very annoying. I wish there was something that can help you guys out with that. But it's it's tough because you guys, obviously, Mike Vick, uh, Steve Young, those are, two, those are two of the more popular quarterbacks in the game right now because, obviously, they're mobile and they're uh, – they're fast, they can throw the ball, but they're left-handed. And a lot of people don't know that you can't run uh, a dive or any type of inside. Well, you can run any shotgun plays are obviously, they're out of they're, they're the same things. But if you guys are under center, like I am now, you guys need to be running the ball if you are running a halfback inside run. If they're right-handed, you need to run it to the right side. If they're left-handed, you need to run it to, to the left side. You obviously can run it to the right and left. But the difference is it's just going to be a lot slower and you're a lot of a lot more block sheds are going to happen. So you guys don't want that. All right. Next 
thing that I want to talk about are the best kind of runs in Madden that you guys can start implementing to help your game out, you know, to help your game be a lot better. And I'm this is going to be quick because I literally just want to stretch plays, toss plays, inside, inside runs. By inside runs, I mean inside zones and halfback dives. No pulling, no pulling guard plays on the inside runs. Halfback dives are extremely glitchy because the handoffs are a little faster, it seems like, this year. Plus, if they are coming out in a formation, let's run, let's run big nickel A-gap, all right? We're going to run big nickel A-gap, and we're going to run mid blitz. Now, if they're coming out in like a 3-4 in like show blitz, this is what this is something that you guys are going to want to run because you guys are going to get yards regardless on them. If their user is, isn't right, you can you can maneuver past the user. But what but what you're doing against this type of defense, like this is pretty much what it looks like when someone is running like a show blitz out of three, four and stuff like that. You're leaving the matchup to a one on one, which literally leaves you open to be to gaining three, four yards a pop, if not even more, if their user isn't in the picture. As you can see, no matter what, I even took that outside and I ended up getting yards on it anyways. But on the inside, you're literally making a one-on-one -on -one situation between whoever's blitzing and your offensive line. That is why halfback dives are so, so important and you guys need to start implementing that into your game. Stretch plays. Now I'm going to show the stretch plays that I feel are very, very good. Any stretch plays out of I-form are typically very, very good. Uh, let's go straight into the runs any stretch plays out of i-form are very very glitchy if you have a pulling fullback that is going to help set that lead block obviously those are really really good as you as you can see i have in i-form slot i have 1693 calls and a six yard average that's actually very very good for any type of run any type of run it's very very good any any stretch play they just happen to be very very good Especially if you're running it to the strong side or the weak side of the defense. They are extremely, extremely well. Now, best runs out of inside zones and stuff like that, out of uh, out of shotgun. 0-1 traps are very glitchy. Uh, inside zone, your regular inside zone. But if you guys have one of those offset running back type of plays, like gun A slot offset, the... The one where the running back is a little slightly behind the quarterback in gun offenses are extremely, extremely good to run. Also, 0-1 traps, whether they're under single back or under under uh, shotgun, those are very, very good as well. And yeah, those are pretty much the best runs in the game. Um, and yeah, I think I think that pretty much covers anything that what like the basics that you guys should start rocking with when you guys are you know running the ball and stuff like that hopefully this video can help you guys get more yards on the run the biggest tip to me that i can give you guys is obviously slowing down you guys gotta have a little bit of patience when you guys are running the ball because i know that's something that a lot of people lack a lot of people just want to just hold turbo straight out of the gate and that is not how you do it take it from somebody who loves to run the ball who prides himself on being a runner. Even though I'm passing a little more this year, you kind of have to with the 91 zone not being in the game. I pride myself on being a good runner. I pride myself on having some really good run, run stick and patience and ball carrier vision is the best thing that I can possibly tell you guys to help, you know, help on your run game. So yeah, if you guys appreciate the video, if you guys are new to the channel, subscribe, smash that like button, man. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. If you guys want me to cover anything for another Basics episode, leave it down in the comment section below. Follow me on Twitter because you guys can catch the gameplay live, but I do not stream on YouTube. You guys already know where I stream. If you don't, it'll be down in the, in the description below. As always, you guys, my name is Pony Montana, and I will see you guys in the next video. Two fingers, man. Peace.